everybody, it's Darcy Eichenberg here of Red Cape Revolution, and I am so excited to be talking to somebody who has been a longtime friend and an inspiration to me, and that's Jennifer Conweiler, who is an author, a speaker, and a coach, and she is about to relaunch the book that started it all, The Introverted <laughs> Leader, and I want to introduce you to her, so let's just say, so hi, Jennifer, how are you? Hey. Darcy, it's great to see you. I noticed we're wearing the same color today. So, uh, <laughs> I, and I also know that you're a Northwestern fan. So I, I didn't do that purposely, but I'm glad it all worked out. Exactly. We, I think we're in blue, but we could pretend it's purple. So oh, that's right. It, it came across on my screen as purple. So it's yeah. funny. Yeah. All right, we'll make it work. We'll go cats. So anyway, yeah. but yeah, well, so I'm excited to hear about the update of your book, The mm -hmm. Introverted Leader, because I think this was the book that was just about to come out when you and I first met. So tell me about, tell me about the, the book as it first started, and then why update yeah. now? Yeah, great question. So Darcy, yeah, you and I met probably about 10 years ago, and that's when the idea of writing The Introverted Leader kind of emerged. I had been working in many organizations where I kept coming up as a coach and as a leadership development uh, trainer and to consultant with the same issue. I would come up uh, and uh, come up and meet many people who were introverted, you know, a lot of folks from the technical areas, in, in fact, I was working in it, who were oftentimes feeling ignored and overlooked. And, you know, and I, and I would work with them on helping them kind of draw from their natural strengths. And I would look for resources. And uh, lo and behold, I think like a lot of authors say, you look for the book and you can't find it. So you decide to write it. And you, and you are, were involved, uh, you know, were aware, aware of that early on when we first met that I uh, was collecting lots of notes and, and anecdotes and stories and started looking at the research. And again, there wasn't a lot of really official research. So I decided to do my own. And, and that was the genesis of the book. It came out in 2009. So it's almost 10 years from when we're uh, filming this interview. I mean, yeah, recording this interview. Uh, so in answer to what you're saying about uh, the next step, so, you know, time's gone on. And since that time, you know that um, it was a, a great opportunity for me to kind of get the conversation going in the workplace, particularly about introverts. And, uh, you know, so we go from a time back then when people would come up to me and say, uh, basically, it's an oxymoron. Uh, you can't have introvert and leader in the same sentence. Mm -hmm. That doesn't fit to mm -hmm. explain that to me. And, you know, when I would talk to people about the fact that introverts have so many strengths in terms of preparation and quiet time and reflection and analysis, I mean, the list goes on and on. And yet uh, people weren't seeing this as fitting into the typical kind of type A, you know, charismatic, you know, just out there kind of a version of a leader. Um, so as time has gone on, it, the uh, many authors started emerging and Susan Cain early on with her book Quiet and probably the most watched TED Talk of all time uh, started happening around that time as well. It was just an interesting confluence of awareness. I think um, introverts had been, you know, under, uh, over, underlooked, as I said, for so long that now it sort of came to the bubble to the surface. And so um, it really started becoming more part of the uh, conversation and in the workplace as well. Yeah, and I think Quiet came out maybe three years or so after your book because I remember seeing that and like, oh, I think I think Jen did it first. <laughs> <laughs> well, it actually wasn't. It, Susan and I, my book came out, but Susan was researching her book for a long time, and um, and her book, it, our books really actually, uh, I have a copy right here. It just came. We just got the new version, so I'll show it to everybody. Um, but it was really great because um, Adam Grant, who who some of you might know as a, a New York Times bestselling author and professor at Wharton, um, had been doing, actually did the first, with his colleagues, um, uh, did the first large-scale study of introvert, introverts in the workplace. And Adam had stumbled upon my book and, um, and then, long story short, introduced me to Susan Cain, who he said Susan was writing her book. So we connected um, early on in the process, and it's been a great partnership. Um, and she really um, op broke open on a massive scale the, the discussion about um, introversion. And I think where my books have come in um, and where my sweet spot is, is, is in providing practical tools for individuals and leaders and organizations to use as they are trying to harness the power 
of people who are more introverted, which is you know between 40 and 60 percent of, of any organization worldwide. Mm -hmm. And so um, I had no idea that it was going to really resonate the way it did. And so you know the books uh, that I've written, Quiet Influence, as well as The Genius of Opposites. And the introverted leader have been translated now, Darcy, believe it or not, into 16 languages. Oh, that's great. That's great. And we'll so. post where this video lives. Um, we'll post links to other interviews that you and I have done together on uh -huh. those books on quiet influence and the genius of opposites. So, but you know, let's take a step back for people that are just getting the chance to meet you right now. Right. Or people that, you know, maybe haven't heard as much about some of the work that's happened um, to really clarify and get distinct about this language of introverts and extroverts. Mm -hmm. Tell me, what exactly is an introvert and mm -hmm. what's an extrovert in the real yeah. workplace today? Right, right. So introversion is about, <coughs> excuse me, is about where you get your energy. And uh, introverts get their energy from within themselves, from taking quiet time, uh, from being in solitude. Um, they live in their heads quite a bit. Um, and uh, get their energy from that, as I say. Um, extroverts, we might as well address that side of the coin. It's really more of like a spectrum, and I'll say about a word about that in a sec. Uh, extroverts get their energy from other people. So you and I self-identify, believe you are also an extrovert, Darcy, right? You get energized by people. Now, that said, um, it's not either or. Uh, what we know now, and even more so, I'm, I'm drawing sort of a, a bell curve here, because most people are clustered um, not at the ends of the bell curve. They're not the outliers. I always laugh, except my husband, you know, Bill, who's an extreme introvert. Most people are somewhere close to the middle, of, in the norm, um, normal range of the bell curve. So it is a spectrum. And it's a nice way to think about it, um, that um, we tend to have a preference for one side or the other. Um, one of the ways that introverts can sort of self-identify is to figure out, well, how much time must, how badly must I need to, um, uh, to, re to decompress and to have quiet time mm -hmm. after being with people? Mm -hmm. Now, if, if you answer that question, uh, yeah, it's kind of nice to have. I like to sit by myself. You're, you, most you may not be an introvert or you may be a very slight introvert. But at the other hand, if you say, I must have that time. Introverts, somebody said uh, once I remember reading, uh, introverts know they're introverts. You don't have to try to figure it out a lot of the time, you know, because they know they need that time. Um, so I think that's one kind of barometer. But what I write about in this book, and I've learned so much in the, um, over the last 10 years talking with um, people in my speaking audiences and my, co my clients and coaching, as well as many readers who it's great now to have the opportunity with social media and with the uh, interactivity of our of our world to hear from more readers than I ever could have even when the first book came out. But as they have shared these stories with me, you know, it's really interesting to learn more about how introversion plays out. And it's not so much trying to spend a lot of time, am I an introvert? Am I an extrovert? Trying to figure out that question. You know, uh, some people say they're more introverted at home. Some are more at work. You know, I mean, it's, it's really about the best, most successful leaders I found um, do know themselves. So they understand that behaviors are what really matter. Mm -hmm. So if it's working for you to be quiet in your meetings and maybe just say a couple of, uh, in, have, have a couple of inputs at work, for instance, and in your culture and the way your meetings operate, you know, I work with librarians for a while, that there's not a lot of pressure to speak all the time and interrupt. Uh, and that, if that's okay. So you have to learn which of the areas that I need to develop, but maybe you need to develop more on your presentation skills because that's what people are looking at as a success factor in your organization. And I know you work a lot with people about that, not trying to change everything about themselves, but looking at what are they doing, what comes from them naturally, what, what emerges naturally, what are their strengths that they could leverage and use even more. Right. And I, I love the take that you had on, you know, it's around understanding yourself first. You know, we do a lot of work here at Red Cape Revolution yes. on clarity and, and also then the making those choices to know yourself to say, okay, after a big event, I need to go hide. I, I don't want to do the cocktail hour. I don't want to do the long dinner, you know, and to intentionally plan that, you know, and I do that for myself as, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not on the extreme end of the extrovert. Right. I need that focus, quiet, 
alone time. So if I've spent a day in front of, you know, an audience of people, you know, facilitating, cajoling, coaching, managing, mm -hmm. I, I need to have that night where I'm just alone and, you know, thinking and, and you know, I just don't want to be um, out all the time. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And I think knowing ourselves and making those choices intentionally. Now you have some tools where, you know, as people are continuing to know themselves, but then also are trying to be the best that they can be in a world that sometimes still seems to favor extroverts. I mean, it, it, it still does. Oh, there, it doesn't seem to, it does. Yeah, <laughs> There's yeah. still a tremendous amount of bias, you know, mm -hmm. it, um, individuals, I think, change. There's more of an understanding one-on-one -on -one as we're having these conversations, like with you and me, or at work when, when I present this information to a company or we're having a class or a team meeting, people are engaging, they're talking. And it's like any other kind of aspect, Darcy, of, of uh, diversity. You know, it's like people don't know what they don't know. There's, there's a lot of blinders. So once we start those conversations and people are having these within offices, what do I prefer? you know, I need time alone or, you know, as you're my manager, how do I manage them up so that if they're introverted, I can flex, you know, so it's like just actually having a conversation is making the big difference for sure. And I, I love that you say that you're, um, you're honoring your time because I truly think one of the benefits of having uh, what I call the rise of the introverts is that we're all getting in touch, myself included, with our introverted side you know, taking a yoga class or not over scheduling yourself. Um, the research is, is resounding about creativity and innovation, um, not coming when you're uh, talking to people. You know, it's, it's not so, I mean, some of that comes, uh, don't get me wrong. There's that stimulation of um, ideas that can happen. But the true work, when you think about, um, you know, great inventions like the Apple computer, you know, Steve Wozniak may have talked to people, but then he went back alone mm -hmm. and created. Um, and there's just so many examples of that within art, you know, and, and science um, that it, it, there is a tremendous amount of, um, of strength and power that comes from the introvert sensibility. And I think we all need to get in touch with that. Mm -hmm. And then we're better for it as well. Um, and not, not, as you say, have that type A being the, the way, the norm that has to always be that way. Right. So what's your recommendation for somebody who is mm -hmm. an, an introvert or knows they, have, they you know, need some of those other tools, they need time, they need space, mm -hmm. You know, they need to be able to get clear about what's in their own head um, as opposed to just shouting out everything that they're thinking immediately, you know, that, and they're in a workplace that feels very, feels very different. Right. What do you need to know or do right. to manage successfully through that and still be able to stay who they are? It's very, it's tough. I'll, I'll say that right away. If the culture is going against you, uh, you know, that it is challenging, but it definitely is how we change things too. Um, so I think to be a little more specific, I mean, we might want to say, um, let's say in a meeting, you know, because uh, you were talking about just the workplace, right? Um, so in, in a meeting, um, you, it may be the kind of thing where you want to, you do want to have a balance. So you want to, you want to use your strength of preparation to know exactly what's on the agenda, what questions you can prepare. And by the way, introverts who do that are seen as much more competent as well because they have done the legwork. They're not just running into the meeting the last minute and, and winging it, you know, as extroverts can do really well, but there's not a lot of depth there. So depth versus breadth is one of the characteristics I write about in the book for introverts. So, so using number one, using your strengths that you already have. Um, I think there are also tools and I include them in, some, in the book with talkers. So one example is, um, you've got, you've got people that are just going on and on. Right. And so one of the things you might do and you've been trained to do is just be nice and nod, you know? And so have you ever thought about not doing that, not engaging with the person, not smiling, you know, being a blank wall. Now for a lot of those people, it may not still shut them up. Right. Mm -hmm. Or if you're interrupted, you know, using a gesture, just, you know, just like they do on the, uh, talk shows, right? Where they're all yelling at each other, which isn't the most civil, right? Stop. right. So we're saying the person's name, John, I'd like to finish my thought. Okay. Yeah. It's also good to have allies in the meeting. So if you have a friend or a colleague who you know that happens, they know it happens to you a lot, they can also intervene and say, you know, we haven't really let Darcy finish her thoughts. So it doesn't always have to be right, 
directly on. Um, another way, and I'll just share one other uh, approach that I, I learned a lot about when I was researching quiet influence, because I looked at what do introverts do to really get their ideas adopted when they don't have position power in organizations? What are the, what are the tools that they use? And, and one of them is that they capitalize on their one-on-one -on -one, uh, conversations that they do very well, where they listen, and they, I call it engaged listening, where they listen, they float objections, particularly if you're trying to get an idea adopted or you want to explore an idea with a colleague or a teammate. It may not be the best place to do that in a group meeting or in a conference call. You, it's just not going to suit to be to your strength. But if you can have a rich conversation with that person offline, and again, it takes a little more time. Um, a, you're going to have more of an advocate in that meeting, and B, you can prepare for the meeting without being blindsided. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times, it comes back to preparation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And and if I recall from some of your earlier work, you know, there's mm -hmm. the, the because. You know the introvert can value the one-on-one -on -one conversation in it in, and and be not only prepared for it but it's a more satisfying experience you know, also to build better relationships you know listen more closely totally. not always waiting to get their perspective in and you know this comes in handy so much today in a world where i think we're longing for connections more than ever and yes. and relationships are really the you know, because they're the next technology to help us grow because oh, yeah, we absolutely one on one. And when I, you know, I hear sometimes from leaders who are thinking about what's next and they just, oh, I don't want to do networking, I hate those big meetings. Like, you don't have to, you don't you have, to. have to, that you can go, you know, one to one. Mm -hmm. That's the gold standard still, the connections one-to-one. -one. I so agree with you on that. I, I've, I've been seeing that more and more as, as I, um, I've been meeting with people one on one. The richness in that, and so number of the last three meetings I had at, at uh, coffee shops were with introverts, uh -huh. and and I I floated that question to them. What's this like for you? And they said, I like it. I can plan as long as I don't have too many of these during the day. You know, mm -hmm. I can plan. And I got to tell you, we had some really rich conversations. We can do it on the phone too. I mean, it's not just face to face. But I I totally agree with you, Darcy. I think which has gotten too much on the other side of you know, technology is just taken over. And um, I think for introverts, that can be a good thing too, because you can build, and you're talking about networking, you can build relationships online um, or through social media and get to know people. And then you can choose, again, about the choice. You can choose to connect with them afterwards or not. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was, that's good too. Yeah. Um, so maybe I could talk a little bit about what's new in this new book. Yeah, that'd be great. I don't know if you were going to ask me about it. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, yeah, because I kept some of the old I, that worked. You know, don't throw away what's working. Right. And so we built on that four P's framework, uh, which is the prepare, presence, push, and practice, which I took really from the research I did with successful introverted leaders. Like, what do you do in different scenarios, whether it be managing up, whether it be uh, leading or communicating or coaching, all the different things you're faced with as a leader. And they do those four things. They prepare, and I have a little card here, that, uh, that kind of shows it, the, the model and, uh, that we, we use. And so that stayed. I mean, we just, what I, so what I did, um, so maybe I'll just read the four Ps again, just so people carefully devise a game plan, be focused on the present moment, push, uh, that's the presence, push, go beyond your comfort zone, and practice sharpen your expertise. Mm -hmm. And if you talk to successful introverted leaders in many different industries across the globe, they will tell you they do this intentionally. They will take a, a, an area that they want to work on and they will do these four things. Mm -hmm. So it's a good coaching tool as well, yeah. you know, yes. to help your and I, and I love the fact the preparation is such the foundation there because again, I think we're often Absolutely. feeling pressured to move fast, but the reality is the great meeting, the great conversation, the result of just having a little bit of time set aside, say, what do I want from this? You know, what's the possible roadblock, the planning piece? I think yeah. that's the strategy that we all could use a little bit more, but then helping, you know, you feel more in control, the feel yeah. that you, that you yeah. have thought through things. And, you know, there's great neuroscience research that says if you experience in your mind first, it's mm -hmm. less intimidating, scary when you experience it in real life. It's true. Um, and it's so, true. So the plan, so, so prepare 
Present. Presence. Uh huh. Being present in the moment. You're not thinking about what happened uh, yesterday or what's going to happen. And that allows you to do the great listening that you do, the observation, mm -hmm. uh, the picking up on when things are shifting. You know, you're giving a presentation and you notice people are, are checking their phones or they're tuned out. How do you actually shift from your plan mm -hmm. to do something else, else and right. be in the moment, to be aware of that? So that's key. And then you had push and you know, yes. out of your comfort zone. I, you know, I always say discomfort is the new comfort zone that yes. if you're not uncomfortable, you're usually not growing. And so that's right. That's uh, right. So, so push. So did Eleanor Roosevelt say that, by the way. Is it, uh, okay. Every day, every day we have to do something that makes us feel uncomfortable. I'm paraphrasing, uh -huh. but I, I listen, that lady sure did well, didn't she as an interviewer? Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's right. So, yeah. So one of the things that's been a great, uh, another change in the book is that, um, well, I condensed some of the chapters and I, I kind of put, uh, tightened up the leadership. So I, I put some scripts in there that people could say, like in coaching Absolutely. and in communicating. Like for, exa for example, um, when you're trying, when you have several points and you want people to listen, I learned this from my, my colleague, Jean Greisman, who uses it a lot. He said, you know, I have three points to make. And he goes, number one, number two. So everybody's listening for the three points. So these tools can be so helpful in getting the attention without saying, hey, I'm here. Stop right. interrupting me. And to set you know? the framework because the brain hates an, with an open loop. So if you say, I have three points, people are waiting for your third point. So, right, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So I love those kind of practical practical tools. Um, I also added new research about workplace spaces and how a lot of people, I get, I get several questions all the time. It's like, I'm moving to an open space. Yes. I can't believe my company is doing this. They're cutting down the walls. You know, at least we had cubes that went like Doonesbury, right? So now it's like a little higher. Now there's barely, you know, you can see it. And I totally feel their pain. I think that, you know, I've worked alone. I've worked out of the an office environment for so long. But the interesting thing is, I'll just take my own example, and I'm certainly, I'm extroverted, but I've connected with my introverts on this. Um, I go to a co-working space a couple of times a week, and I find mm -hmm. there are a lot of introverts there. And why is that? Because of the concept I identify, which is communal solitude. Mm -hmm. The people like to also be around. Mm -hmm. So I thought when my publisher, Barrick Polar, moved to that, that they would, you know, publishing, probably 95% of the people are, um, well, maybe not that high, but maybe as I think 80%, let's guess, are introverts. Mm -hmm. You know, they like to read and they're into the proofreading, right? designers, and those salespeople probably don't fall into that, right? They're more in maybe the ambivert side. But I thought they would just go crazy. And they actually, even the most introverted among them, said that they really um, did okay with it. And why is that? There's more collaboration going on. Uh -huh. Now, the caveat is, um, and I saw that collaboration go on in other companies I visited too, with agile processes where they get together. But the caveat is that you need to have options for people to also be alone. You know, huddle rooms where they can go, mm -hmm. um, where introverts and extroverts can naturally commingle is what Steve Jobs did at Pixar. He, he designed it so that people would be forced if they're going to the bathroom, that they would have to uh, commingle, mm -hmm. you know? So I think that, that there is a lot to be said for that, but there's also the choices to have huddle rooms or, or just places around and building where you can go. I saw that a lot when I was traveling in Europe in companies mm -hmm. where they would have these really nicely designed sort of just pods where you could just go sit and hang out mm -hmm. and they were comfortable. Mm -hmm. um, and then of course, remote working. I mean, it's not uh, and many jobs can be done. We're not in the office, okay? Mm -hmm. So having that as a not all or nothing, but to have it as an option allows people to work on the tasks that they need to or kind of uh, get the rhythm that they need going um, away from the office. Mm -hmm. um, so I think just having a lot of choices. And so just being aware of creating an introvert-friendly work environment mm -hmm. um, is a real plus now that I see happening in, in, the, in the hallways. And, and even thinking about, you know, as a leader, who your people are when you are making some of these decisions and when you yeah. are planning some of these things out and are there alternatives for different types of work? Are there alternatives for different types of people that we might need or have in the future? Because I've seen so many companies kind of be the all this or all that. And, you know, again, oh, yes. life is like your bell curve that you were saying before. It's kind of somewhere in between. So. Absolutely. You and I have been in many organizations where we've seen them swing, right? And then they swing right back again. Mm -hmm. uh, so, no, I think that's absolutely true. And it, 
a lot of times it might just be a small change that you make. So one small change that I like to share with people, and, and I get some pushback from the extroverts sometimes on this, you know, we've always heard about brainstorming right, as being the way to generate creative ideas. Well, that, that has been challenged a lot in uh, the research because uh, the ideas don't necessarily come, A, when you're talking them out, that might be your initial blush, and B, you're not hearing from a lot of times at least half the people in the room, and you're building on the extrovert's idea, so it goes in another direction. So these tools of, uh, the tool, using the tool of writing, um, this is just a very simple way to sort of bring another introvert perspective into it, which is let's think about it for a minute before we say it. <laughs> you know, the introverts, the kind of joke is what the introverts, uh, you know, think first, talk later, and the extroverts talk first, think later, mm -hmm. which is kind of true, wouldn't you say? Mm -hmm. A lot of times they just kind of say what, because they think verbally, you know, right. it's coming out. I don't, know, I don't know what I think until I say it, right. Until I say it. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just that you don't want that to be the only way that we get work done. Mm -hmm. So I was in one group where one of the managers said, no, no, can't we just talk? Can't we just talk? That's the way to do it. And he, I encouraged him to try it. Let's just try this. And it's just like when you ask people to um, be quiet for a few seconds and, you know, and I'll have this happen in speeches that I do. It's quite interesting. And I had one recently where a woman just like shrieked. She went like, ah, she couldn't handle it. People don't, aren't comfortable, Darcy. Have you found that with silence? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just to go within. And we're only talking like, take a minute to think about this. Write down your ideas. Right, 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that's something we can train our our brains to do. Don't you think that's something that can be I, trainable? I have to today because I think that there are fewer and fewer opportunities to force us to that. And again, it's in the times that I've been quiet are when I actually start to recognize what do I think about this? What is my opinion? Mm -hmm. And what is my course of action? You know, what's the step I want to take? So. Right, right, right. Yeah. And you, you and I have done um, coaching, peer coaching with each other, but then we go back and kind of reflect on it, right? Mm -hmm. What's emerged? So again, that's an introvert technique or approach that is natural. And introverts will so appreciate it. And believe it or not, the extroverts, just as I was saying earlier, will also benefit. Mm -hmm. So we have to kind of take a look, as you say, just bring it into consciousness. You know, are we, are we scheduling uh, or structuring our, our meetings or our events in a way that is just geared to extrovert just because we always have you know are we designing our new office thinking about the introverts so ask them you know i i went after the book came out i remember i did a program at a national i work a lot with um, federal federal agencies and this was a very impressive one they a lot of brainiacs i would say and um the woman in hr who brought me in i uh, was very pleased to show me where they had had the recent holiday party and she walked into the cafeteria and she said, this is where we had it. And I thought, well, what, you know, what's special about this? This is the, she goes, well, we decorated, but what we really did, Jennifer, that was really cool is we created these little talking area spaces that were off the cafeteria that gave people places to talk quietly in small groups. And she said, people loved it and we're going to continue this. And they even created more the next year. So it's just, you know, asking introverts, saying, what would you like? You know, do you, you don't want to just be standing around with a cocktail and a right, right. hors d'oeuvre, right? right? Trying to balance it so loud that you can't hear anybody else. Oh, so, yes, right. Exactly. Yeah, interesting, interesting. Well, there's so much good stuff in this book. I am so excited for the next version of the book. So tell uh, the folks where well, I hope this is it. You know, I mean, the next version, this version, you mean? <laughs> yeah, this version. This oh, version. Good. I hope you aren't projecting yes. a, another yes. 10 years. Yeah, but that could be. You never know. You never know. You never know. Yeah. So know. where can people find um, it and you? So the best place to go is my website, which is, and you guys will put that up on there, right? On the, uh, on the, yep, it'll be here in the blog post. Huh? But it's, it's Jennifer Conwaller. It's all one word. Um, and it's K-A-H-N-W-E-I-L-E-R.com. I'm also on, I'm very active on Twitter and LinkedIn and, and somewhat on Facebook too. So if you want to engage in that way, or just drop me an email through my website, it'd be great. And I do, we do have a new quiz that I encourage people. It's free and it can kind of get, you can gauge how you're doing as an introverted leader or as a leader in general. Um, and it's very short and uh, we are going to compile the results because we're getting a lot of uh, response to it. Um, and we'll make that available to show you sort of where you fit in 
you know, in the scheme and what you might want to focus on. So if you go to my website, the quiz is right up there on the homepage. So Terrific. thank well, you so much for you. having me, Darcy. It's yeah. always a pleasure. Always a pleasure to talk to you. We'll make sure we have links to this. And again, the book is The Introverted Leader. It's a brand new update with all new stories from Dr. Jennifer Conweiler. Oh, and you. I'm so glad to celebrate this with you and share these ideas with our audience. And so if you're someone who is an introverted leader or love someone who is, make sure you go pick up the book, uh, get on some of Jennifer's uh, information blogs, follow her on Twitter, and I know that you'll continue to grow your leadership so that you can keep bringing your superpowers to work. So I'm Darcy Eichenberg, and thanks again to our guest. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Thank you, Darcy, so much.